Hello, this is Tolfman Trifle Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can have underwater scenes made in Blender fairly easily by using the Aqua Underwater Add-on. That's the Aqua Underwater Add-on. It's not a free add-on, it's around $23, uh, but for that price, it's not too bad. As for Blender 3.0, all the way up to Blender 4.0, and it works better in cycles as opposed to EV. I'm going to leave a link of it below the video so you can download yourself and check it out. I'm using 3.4 for this tutorial. And to install it, it's still the same process. Click on Edit, Preferences, Install. Navigate to where you've downloaded onto your system. Click on Install Add on. I'm going to type in Aqua. And it's right here, just put a check in the box and it's activated. Now we're going to get rid of this cube. We don't really need it. So delete that. And it's on the right hand side of the UI. So that's out all the way at the bottom for myself. This is the most recent install. And there are just about two buttons here. There's a YouTube and Discord buttons. You can check out the developer's YouTube channel and his Discord. Uh, but when you click on Create Aqua, it gives you the setup with uh, water simulation at the top. And then you have a cube for where the water and the uh, simulation is supposed to happen. You have a light source. You have a shark. The shark is not uh, animated at all. But the water is. When you press play on your keyboard, see the water starts to move, which is pretty nice. Now for all your scenes, oh, I'm going to switch to cycle so you can get a better look or understanding of how the setup is. So I'm going to go to my render settings here. Turn from EV to cycles. CPU to GPU when you have a strong enough graphics card. And I'm going to click on this tab to change the render viewport here. And once we've done that, we have a scene here with an HDR sky image, which is helpful. Outer cube inner cube and this inverted dome with the water simulation at the top. Now, when you ever you input your own models into this scene, always make sure it's inside this cube because this is where the action happens, so to speak. So we're going to zoom in here so we can see what's going on. So you can see that it's really murky water and it simulates underwater atmosphere very, very well. And it renders very quickly also. Now all the parameters here, I mean, it's highly customizable. It's got a lot of parameters to choose from and to adjust. Now you can change the color of the ocean material to where you want. Not right now, it's white. You can make it green, blue, or red. Uh, the roughness of the water, in terms of the murkiness, you can change that too by increasing that. It, you can see it, it affects the surface of the water quite a bit. Let's press Ctrl Z to go back to the default settings. Uh, the IOR is the image of refraction. That's how the light from the top refracts through the water into the water. And you can change, you can like scroll out if you want to and change your light source. Right now it's, um, what is it? Let me see what this light source is. It's a sun, which is fine. You can change it to a point light spotlights or to an area lights, but sun works fairly well for this uh, underwater scene. Scroll back in again. Now the ocean settings are right here for X, Y, and Z. You can change the, oh, there's no Z, just X and Y. You can change it in terms of it's repeating uh, to whatever you want it to be, higher or lower for X or Y. Change the size of the uh, waves. Uh, the spatial size, wave scale also, you can increase that, the choppiness and the wave alignment, it's all adjustable. Uh, the lighting, you can also change that. Right now it's a white sun. You can click on that, make it yellow if you want, to make it more realistic. Uh, but since the water is bluish, if you change the source, it can also affect the way the water looks in terms of the color of the water. Uh, you can increase the sun energy. If it's too bright, it could kind of uh, blow out your scene. If it's too uh, little in terms of the energy it can make it the scene a little bit too murky a little bit too dark uh, the world strength that's this outer part the sun or the clouds actually and the sky you can make it brighter if you bump this up to 10 enter it makes it white but it's also blown out so one 
Anything one and below is good. Control Z, go back to one. Uh, the caustic strength. Now what caustics is, is how the light uh, interacts with the water in terms of it coming from the surface up here into this cube of uh, volume of water here. You can adjust that. You can change the, ca the caustics color also. Right now it's kind of a purplish color. You can turn it to red or to green, any color you want. Now it affects it slightly. It's not like a tremendous uh, change in the way the light enters. Uh, but you can see it is more greenish than it was before. Let's try to turn back to that light purple color. So now it's more purplish at the top. So that's also helpful. You can change the water color. Right now it's like a bluish color. Once again, click on it to give you the color wheel. Turn it to red, green, whatever color you want. So you can have like really unique looking underwater scenes. If you want to change it to like a reddish color, make it look like it's on Mars or on some kind of alien planet, you can do that. So there's a lot of parameters to this, which is nice. Uh, you can change the, the count of the bubbles because when you play the animation underwater and your camera's underwater, you're looking underwater, all these little white specks here, th those are bubbles. And you can increase the count. Let's say we bump this up. Right now it's at around 9,000. Let's bump it up to like 20,000. 20. One, two, three, enter. It'll increase the number of bubbles. Oh, that's my alarm clock on the phone, my apologies. But you can increase the bubbles here. But keep in mind that the bubbles are actual particles. Uh, they're actual physical models of bubbles. Uh, if we go back to our viewport here, if we scroll out, right down here is, is the model of the bubble. So it's a physical model of a bubble. So the more you increase the count of the bubbles, the more it could kind of, it can slightly affect the rendering uh, speed of your animation there. And it, we can increase the particle size. Right now it's at 0 0.015. Click in there, maybe change it to 10. It makes it, obviously this is too big. You know, you don't want this size, but you can adjust the size of the bubbles as you want. Control Z to go backwards. And change the speed of the bubbles. So yeah, this is the Aqua Underwater add-on which is it's, it's uh, pretty nice it's, it has a specific uh, objective or a specific function which is to represent underwater scenes and as you can see it works very well and make sure like I said before make sure that everything that you put in your scene is here and in this cube uh, you could make the cube bigger I think let me let me test that let me press that select my cube press s Oh, that made it crash. Okay, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess you can't. <laughs> I guess you can't resize the cube then. Well, okay, that's unexpected. Uh, let me open that back up. I did not expect that to happen. That was different. <laughs> wow, okay. Let me delete that. Uh, go back to our scene again. As it, where is it? Oh, it actually took the, well, that was unexpected indeed. It actually took the add-on out of Blender in general. I did not expect that. Let me activate that again. Aqua. I'll actually turn the add-on off. I don't know why that happened. Don't have the slice. That, that's the first time that that's happened to me using the add-on. But actually, if that happens, like I just did, if you want to tinker around with other aspects of the add-on in terms of like resizing, resizing the cube or things like that and, and your uh, Blender crashes, I'll just go back into the uh, preferences and turn it back on. But uh, apparently you can't increase the size of the cube. So everything has to be inside this cube. So make sure that your camera, I mean, it's a good space to work with. Make sure everything is just right in here. Uh, you don't want to have, and make sure your, your camera is kind of uh, positioned to where you don't have any uh, situations where it kind of clips the bubbles. As you can see right now, we have a, like a straight line of bubbles here. So you want to make sure the camera isn't picking any of that stuff up. So you might, might want to kind of position your camera like pointing down or pointing up like this, but not just straight ahead. You don't want just a line of bubbles uh, being rendered out in your scene. Uh, but apparently that's, that's the only thing that I've seen that's kind of off with the add-on. 
it crashing and then the uh, kind of limited space you have to work with in terms of the bubbles appearing just on one line. Uh, but that's today's Blender quick tip, the Aqua underwater add-on. $23 uh, for what it can do that's not that bad. And it renders fairly quickly in cycles. And EV doesn't look too good. Cycles looks great. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for those of you that have watched. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.